and we're off with another game now my opponent i know quite well actually he was uh, he's a friend of mine from sweden pontus carlson and he is um, a very strong player and he's playing the dutch against me cheeky guy he's trying the dutch against me that should not be allowed so i'm gonna try to move a bit quicker than i do in previous games a very talented player is um pontus one of the top players obviously from sweden as long as well as thinking of other players we have emmanuel berg tiger hillet person you know there's, there's a couple of there's a couple of very strong swedish players okay so what's going on here well it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit chaotic this position um should i take with a pawn or with a piece i don't know i mean i want to get castle queen side here in this very peculiar position so um let's i don't know let's throw a knight into the center and see what happens now yeah like i say pont is a very strong player and i think he he doesn't play chess full time now he does other things like um maybe even he does banking now or something like this but he's he's a, yeah talented guy should we say right well if i can get my king castled i'd be feeling quite happy here but it seems that i'm quite a long way from doing that i i certainly prefer my opponent's position um I was wondering if I, I had some cheeky move like queen takes knight there. It doesn't seem to work. Um, and now my opponent is coming, obviously, over on the area of the board. I'm a little bit worried. Okay, here. So maybe even my king should go on f1 here. This might be this might be a safer way to play because now he's got the open b file. Things are looking a little bit risky over there. And he wants to probably put his knight in here. So let's let's control that square. Maybe put my king on f2 and try to survive like that. Hopefully I'll get an attack going at some point later on. But don't ask me how that's going to happen now because I have no idea. And let's... Okay, first of all, connect my rooks. And I'm a little bit worried about something nasty happening with knight here check. Oh, that could be nasty. That's the kind of tactical... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I fell into that one. He's done it the other way around. So if I go queen takes here, he moves his knight check. Oh, this is looking... This is looking ugly, shall we say. Oh, it's the first game. What's wrong with me? I, I must be... I think I'm cursed in the first game. I mean, you see me do this time and time again. I can't win the first game of chess. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's unbelievable. I always lose the first game. Now, something like F4 here would be bad. Or, oh, yeah, oh, God. this is starting to... I mean, I'm very tempted to resign here. But, um, well, because if I move the queen, he takes... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. This is just, this is just horrible. It's not nice. We'll play on a little bit. We shouldn't resign so early, should we? It's looking ugly. Um, looking ugly. And now... He has queen takes c5. Got to move my king off some kind of discovered attack here. And now I need a miracle. Well, let's have ideas of knight e4. Let, let's get some tricks going. And now he wants to exchange queens. And obviously this is a disgusting ending. How many pawns down am I? Too many is the answer. Too many. Okay, but... The fighters are still on. Maybe I should have gone knight d1 earlier because this is uh, this is um, looking pretty terrible still. Okay, well I've got one pawn back. I will grab that one. So I'm still trying some magic here, uh, but that's not going to be enough, is it? One pawn in a horrible position like this. Now I need to get my rook in and try to get my king in on the dance squares. This is my only hope. Just don't worry about pawns. Rush my king in. So let's go. Let's try to rush it in. I think g5 will stop me doing that. Or this one. Shall I go for a self-mate here? Oh, dear. Shall I? Shall I? Okay, come on then. Let, let's, get, let's give him a little bit of... Uh, see if I can self-mate myself. King h6 and g5. Well, I'll make it as difficult as possible for him to mate me. And... I'm kind of in what we call zugzwang now. I'm running out of moves here. 
I'm running out of moves to play. All of my moves are not looking good. So all I can do is move my rook backwards and forwards. And that's not fun. <laughs> oh dear, this is bad. This is bad. This is really bad. I should resign, but okay, I've, got, I've still got Harry. We don't resign when we've still got Harry, and he's running now. And my opponent, a little bit short of time. Here he comes. Can I pull off the swindle of the century here? Can I? Uh, let's run. Let's run, and now run back. And now he gets his rook behind the pawn. Oh, lovely play. Have I got stalemate here? Oh, look at that. If he takes the rook, it's stalemate. Wow. And <laughs> I'm trying to be as tricky as tricky can be here. And now, oh dear, I didn't count. I didn't. I didn't count that very well, did I? Okay, right. We'll we give him that one. We we'll give him that one. So uh, let's try again now. So obviously the Dutch is a good system. Let's see if we can get an interesting. I think I'll go for a main line. Oh no, he's done well. I have to say this bishop b5 check has a rather boring reputation, but it can get very interesting. Um, my theory is a bit slack on it. I think he goes e5, something like this. But he has to play a move like g4. So, I, okay, he hasn't gone for that. He's gone for some slower system. So I'm assuming now I'm going to try to go d5 and maybe get a, like a French defence kind of system here. Um, with my bishop outside the pawn structure. That makes sense. So I think I can play this now. Let, let's go for it now. Um, if he takes, I take undouble my pawns, and this was a move that certainly had me a little bit concerned. Now, I've got a very interesting option here, which I'm going to have to play, because it just looks mental. And I'm going to play this, just because it's such a weird looking idea. Try to put my king on g6, but also destroy my opponent's pawn structure just because it, it looks a bit looks a bit weird he's got pawn takes pawn no he hasn't bishop takes pawn there was an idea of him going pawn takes pawn and rook takes e6 leading to mate there um so let's see how this turns out i, I don't really believe it because my king is very funny but his his king side structure is always damaged i mean it was only a double pawn that my opponents won and we, we don't care about such things do we so I've just got to think where my king is going to find its home, though. Now, that's the problem, isn't it? Um, I put my king on a stupid square, and I could, I could regret this idea. Um, okay, well, I'm going to put it on f7, try to go bishop d6, knight e7. That's how I'm going to try to finish my development. And I, the reason I thought this might be playable again is his, his king side, and because of my opponent's pieces. They're not, they're not playing at the moment. So, um, okay, so, right, well, we naturally develop my bishop, and my knight is one square from getting full development, and then I'd be quite happy. So let's get it in the game. There we go. And now I feel I, sh I should have decent compensation here. Um, let's keep my pieces on the board. I can even maybe put this, let's put it on c7. I don't want to exchange ideas of queen d6 now. Maybe knight e7 was a bad move. I could have gone queen d6. So my opponent now is stopping me going queen d6 by placing his queen on this square. Now I have a crafty idea. What about this one? Is this is this a is this a move? If he takes, I have bishop h2 check. And I'm trying to get my queen to d6 and maybe move this knight into e5. A bit more active square. So Queen d6, he'll go pawn here. I haven't quite got my initiative going, have I? Knight here, he just does something else. So how how do I get my pieces? I need to get them more into the attack here. I can't work out how I'm going to do that. It's annoying. This Okay, well, let's try here in g5. If f4, I'm assuming he goes f4. He doesn't need to go f4 because this is only one check at the moment, but at least my queen's a bit nearer to touch down there. And if he goes f4, maybe g5. Maybe g5 then. Very interesting. Trying to get a rook to g8. 
and tear up the G file. So, okay, well I have to I have to play it now. It's it's clear that I've got to play very aggressively. And well, for a change, I have a time advantage, which is nice. It was nice to have a time advantage and. Let's see. I don't know. This is a, okay. He's playing very sensibly. He just wants to go into an ending, but he can't. Okay. Will he take? He can't go into an ending now because I win the bishop. Oh, how did I miss such a simple move? Okay. Well, that's frustrating because now I'm going to have to enter into an ending, which is. Oh no! Oh dear! I'm missing everything. Okay. Well, no. I, I say I missed it. I saw that. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so. Can I do anything except for queen f7 and go into exchange queens? Is there anything else playable? I don't think so. I'm going to have to play for this move. And again, I'm material down, but my opponent's time is very low. So this might, this might help me. Now, where do I put my rook? Do I have a safe square? For my rook, can't see one. Okay, I'm gonna go here. I've got to move quick here. I want to put something on e5. If I get something on e5, then all of a sudden the position becomes, I would think, a little bit more unclear. Now I'm gonna take with the king, keep my rook here, try to get my rook to g8. Now rook g8 will create some checkmating ideas, but let's let's move the king in first. Keep keep creating threats. That's the way. I like to play, so I keep creating threats on my opponent's position. And okay, what's happening here? Well, he's got this knight check. Try to get rid of the bishop so I can soften up f2. And well, I think my opponent's time is just too low there. So we're not not a, not a very convincing win, shall we say? But a, a win is a win is a win. And okay, now we're going to go for one of my favorite wing gambits. G6, in my opinion, is the best move. Um, but my philosophy is whenever they play G6, we move Harry up the board and we aim to attack with Harry. So come on, Harry. Come on. And at some point, I'm probably going to try to go H6. This is... Uh, uh, this is a, this is my main idea, but maybe I'll leave I'll leave this lurking here for the time being, because if he castles kingside, I'll be wanting to take on g6, open up the h file, and in other positions, maybe I want to play h6. So I'm going to kind of leave this lurking here. Now, do I? Okay, I'm going to make exchange off this knight. I think. Um, he had a nice control of d4, so I'll aim to make some exchanges on that square just to free free up the centre of the board. And I've still got my pawn here, which is a bit annoying for him because I think he'd like to castle kingside, but he, he Pontus doesn't want to do this because he'll risk opening up the h-file. Um, well, that's a very committal move. Now, I'm going to... Well, if I go h6, he'd take here. That's probably a good good idea there from Pontus because now he can go h6 and he's his king is a little bit safer. But of course I'm going to castle queenside and play f4, try to blow things up again. And see Harry's done a very good job there, a very good job of just weakening the position. And I, I quite like my structure. F4 an idea if he'd have gone kingside, but as he hasn't, I'm going to play in the centre now and just try to pressurise at some point d6 now i'll take with a bishop because his bishop is a more active piece than mine and in order to pressure d6 i want to keep obviously the d file half open and there's a little bit of pressure here only a little bit though um now very tempting to go e5 but then i do lose the weakness here of this pawn b even I like b4. I'm going to go b4. It's quite an aggressive move. b5 is an idea. Kicking his bishop back to a worse square. And also my king is quite happy on b2. So again, e5. Very tempting. How does this work out? 
Well, if D5, oh, let's go for it. Let's go for it because it's trying to open things up. And that, that's a very tempting thing to do here. I don't know if it's correct because, again, I, I could just be getting rid of the weakness of the D6 pawn by playing this. So it's a bit of a double-edged move. And again, F4 double-edged. C4 looks like the move I want to play, but then he's going to take... Okay, let's go for F4. Not sure about that one because it gives him counterplay on the G file. So I'm not I'm not 100% sure about th this this idea. Um, and of course he's trying to pin my rook, but now created a threat of rook takes F7 check. And I thought my queen would be quite good potentially coming in on the dark squares there as well. Um, G4 guarding H5. And I still seem to have a nice hold on the position here. Got some targets to attack later on. But there's moves I've got to watch out for. I've got to watch out for him ever playing the move D4. That's like a standard break here. Maybe he should go D4 now, actually. D4. Just, just, just to open up the position. Because I can't take with the rook. If I take with this rook... Well, I probably do take. Okay, so he's preparing this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that for for as long as possible. Put my rook here, stop him breaking. Okay, and now, oh dear, I've walked into something nasty. Oh dear, what am I doing? That was silly, wasn't it? Because if I take, he goes e5. Very silly mistake of my me there. My position was looking good, wasn't it? Apart from that, so. I should not have uh, walked in this. Why don't I go something like Queen D4? That would have been much better because the pin was not so scary. Um, okay, well, I, I'm going to have to go into another ending where I'm just a pawn down here. Uh, like last time, though, I've got Harry and I've got more time. So it's not so bad. And when you have Harry, you push Harry. This is the rule. So, uh, let's get my rook behind. He's only two squares from touchdown. There we go. In we go with number one. How is this position? It's not completely smelly. Actually, now I have bishop here. This, okay. Now, I have ideas now trying to get my rook to g8. I don't know. This is This is a weird, weird position, but... I'm not convinced it's terrible for me. I mean, I'm not sure it's like the best position I've ever had either. Right, first of all, I'm going to blockade these pawns. Let's put the bishop here. And now I just need to get my rook into the game, don't I? Okay, time though, time. Okay, so this is idea. Get my rook to this square and rook g8. And also I'm covering the g pawn. So I'll take this one first. Rook g8 is... At some point, my idea. But, okay. How do I get my... Okay, time again comes into play. Well, I think Pontus would be annoyed by that one. Obviously, he let it slip a little bit there. Um, we'll try playing a couple more games. I am now I've just released the DVD for Chess Base on the opening I'm going to try out here, The Black Lion which is quite an aggressive opening against, well, I say it's an aggressive opening I'm playing, but Pontus has gone for the most aggressive option, G4. Now, D5 is the move I recommend on my DVD, but I filmed it quite a while back now. My memory is not as good as maybe it should be, so um, I don't know what I'm doing, basically, is, is uh, what I was, how, how I was going to answer. Um, well, let's see. I'll take here. And think about what I'm going to do next. Well, I need to move this knight, so... I suppose taking here is sensible. And now c6, get that queen away. Yeah, I'm a pawn down, but my opponent has some very weak pawns. And he doesn't want his pawn on g4 here, does he? Because his king... Where, where's his king going to go? If he castles kingside, it's always going to be a bit weaker because of Gary. And... If he goes queenside, it's going to be weaker because of this pawn. So I think this is pretty good compensation here. My, my development's going to be good. I'm castling. I've got the e6 square. 
I haven't put a piece on e6 yet because I wasn't sure whether I'd want to put my bishop or knight there. But it has gone my bishop. And now I'm trying to make him go bishop takes bishop, so I take with my knight. I say that though. Um, maybe I want to take with my pawn even on e6, opening up the rook. That's a more aggressive move. So let, let's, let's go for that one. Let's take with a pawn. Because then my rook can join in the action. My mouse seems to be better after um, changing USB, by the way. But it, it's still not 100%. So, you know, I pay quite a lot of money for this mouse. I want, a, I want one that works. I want a mouse that works. Okay, now I've got knight here. I also like my queen coming into the central square. So, which one is it going to be? What's it going to be? Bishop here is another idea. I've got lots of tempting little moves here. Now, knight here, he moves his queen. Oh, let, let, let's just put that there. Let's create a threat, shall we? And I can even follow this up with queen d5 or knight g5. Um, well, it depends where he puts his queen. Queen, where does the queen go? You know, if queen e3, I think my knight, something on g5 eventually will, will fit quite well. But I think my next move is queen d5. You know what I totally missed when I went for this, which he's probably working out and I just haven't bothered to work out, is knight takes pawn. I totally, totally didn't see he could play that. Oh, my word. Shows you, shows you I'm not on 100% at the moment. So he's played it anyway, of course. Of course he has. Unbelievable for me. But his king is still weak because of the g-pawn. So I, I, I still don't think it's... Completely all over this position. Now rook here, taking here, he will move this pawn up. That's something I'd like to stop. This would be really nice if I get my rook in. I can't see how I'm going to make that work. Oh no, he can't do that because g4 drops with check. Well, he can do it, but I take on g4. So again, I still believe compensation is here, but probably not enough for two pawns. But there's some compensation. And that's all we need in life. A little bit of compensation. Okay, now this pawn is weak, so I attack it. Simple chess. Attack weaknesses. Okay, now... some really close to being some tactics here. With rook takes pawn. Got to work this out, so... Takes... Takes here, check. King here. Takes, takes, check. King here. Oh, my time check. King here. Can't get it to work. Very annoying. Very annoying. Very frustrating. Um, okay, I couldn't get it to work, um, the tactic. So I'm going to go for an idea of rook c4 instead. And let's put that there because he was threatening bishop a3. And now I've got h5 to try to open him up there. I have to open up things on this side of the board. So I need to, I need to play h5. And now I'm down on time. So it's actually me who is struggling on the clock in this game. Um, and, well, his king is under more pressure than mine, I think. More pressure. And I like my bishop here. Okay, he's gone for this. So I'm going to threaten rook g3. Take a pawn, threaten rook g3. And now my queen, active square. Rook g3, massive threat. And now rook c2. His king side is, is on the verge of crumbling. Bishop coming in. The bishop does come in with a nasty check there. And now that is an even bigger check, Pontus. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, son. Pontus, I'm a sorry. You're a lovely guy. But when it comes to blood on the board, you know, is there, there's only... We've got, we've got to throw blood on the board. Okay, so I've got him angry now. I've got him angry. And I've got to 2,500. Woo, 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 woo. I'm back kind of where I belong. I kind of feel like I'm a 2,600 player. You know, I think that's where I really belong. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe one day. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to change up the opening. So I've gone here for an English opening. It's just nice to have a change, you know. Change the position up a little bit. And this setup here is what people call the Moroxy bind setup generally um i guess it's because the geezer called Moroxy played it 
um, where I, I, I used to play this kind of stuff when I was a, a youngster in chess, you know. I say youngster, it's a while back now. Um, he, can't, he can't start using Harry against me. That's not on, that's not on, sir. It's not on, he's starting to use Harry against me. You know, I'm, I'm not happy with this. That's, that's not cricket. Harry is my friend, he's not your friend, Pontus. He's my friend. He's gonna push it again, isn't he? He is. I can feel. I can feel he's gonna push it again. I mean, generally, I have to go g4 against this, but will he then sack? Okay, he hasn't pushed it yet. Now I feel that's a mistake because my bishop is lined up against that guy. He's moving them all over, isn't he? I think I've got him angry now. He is angry. But if he doesn't checkmate me, I have a lovely bishop on b2. And I think he has to go queen f5. And that's a move that he doesn't want to play because the queens are exchanged. Now, I could have taken on f6, caused him more pawn damage, but I like this piece. This is a nice piece. I don't want to exchange this one off. I want to keep my two bishops for later on, and especially this guy here. He has a pawn on a dark square there, and it's a double pawn. So if I have a dark square bishop later on, my dark square bishop will probably in an ending, for example, be able to target his pawns. Because if he defends c5 of a pawn, he has to go b6. And then my bishop will hopefully, in the ending, get around and start nibbling away at those little guys there. So I should be a bit better here. Should be a little bit better. And now g4, it's a little tactical idea. Can I go for a tactical idea, g4? Takes, 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 let's go, let's go for this. Let's try to keep the tactics going, if we can. And I want to gain a little bit of space. If he retreats his bishop, I, I've made a little bit of progress over there. Because this is gained space. If he takes on d2, I take on f5. So, so now I want to keep my two bishops. g4 has helped me. And just try to move forward slowly with my pawns. Theoretically, I have an extra pawn in this position because of his double pawns. Theoretically. So, how do we move them forwards? Well, this one gives him potentially a square hit and the d4 square. I don't like that move. Let's keep things simple. So, I'm going to go here with the simple idea of exchanging all the rooks off. If I can and get to this ending I mentioned before, I don't want him checking with a knight. Is he going to check with a knight? No. I want to keep things simple when in the ending, I'm hoping. As I've mentioned time and time again, my bishop could become good. I've got to watch out my pawns as well. You know, I can't forget about these. These are on light squares, so I can't forget about them. Opening up my other bishop. His knight's well placed. Um, okay, so I could move my pawn here, making this bishop a bad piece. I like this move. I like this move. Shutting his bishop in so it can't come and annoy my pawns. And now, as I mentioned before, it's time to target those double pawns. This has kind of been my game plan from earlier on. You know, he has double pawns. Later on in the ending, I go here. So this is this is what I'm trying to do. And he's going to try and move his bishop there at some point. Okay, but I've won a pawn. Very useful pawn. And this is looking quite good for me. He wants to put a piece there though, and swap off. That's going to be annoying. So I want to keep my two bishops right. Go here first. And now my extra pawn is not worth a great deal at the moment. It's not a great extra pawn. And he can try to put, yeah, put his, this is what I was worried about. Now I'll go here first. If he checks, I have bishop e2. Still a pawn advantage, so should be some, some edge to me. Well, of course it's a pawn. A pawn in an ending is... There's always going to be some some edge. So now, okay. How do I make progress though? This is the issue. Uh, here's a check if I go there. Well, let's move the pawns over here. And okay, very good move because his pawns are on light squares. He's fixing my pawns now. That's a very good move that Pont has played. Um, positionally very very good and now my only hope he's swapping everything off as well this is this is good technique from 
Pontus now. Where did my bishop go? I can try to get my king to take b5. This is my only, only chance of winning this, I think. Or using my, using, okay, he's blockaded that one as well. This is going to be impossible. Maybe I'll offer him a draw. Shall I offer him a draw? Let's offer him a draw. Let's, let's go nice on him. Okay. There we go. I could have won on time, maybe, but I, 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 I'm not going to only win sometimes on time when I'm in a bad mood. We, we don't do this all the time. Um, okay, French defence. Over to the French. And Tarash French. Of course, if you want to learn more about this DVD, uh, DVD, you know what I'm going to say next. If you want to learn more about this opening, buy the DVD. The best DVD on the French defence in the world, available from www gingergm.com for download and for other purposes as well brilliant dvd go and buy it now okay i think that's enough of that sales pitch isn't it we don't need any more of that okay right so i'm not sure i should have done that one actually in this particular position but hey ho and let's keep pushing him the problem is i know from experience that a move like f3 or f4 could could get me in yeah he's played it could get me in trouble because I, I you know if he pushes on f5 i could just get destroyed on this area of the board um so you can see i was a little bit a little bit worried there where do i put my king we had we had this issue earlier um yeah he's just trying to he's just basically trying to blow me apart here Rook takes as even possible. Uh, and I don't blame him for trying to kill me. I need to get my king safe. It's still quite murky. So I go here. Queen f1. I'm just... Oh, I can't really castle that side, can I? Because I'm going to drop this pawn. And he's got knight c5 coming as well. Um, well, if queen f1... Well, he's gone back. I'm quite happy that he's gone back. Not sure what else he could have done, but I'm quite happy when my opponent retreats. So I'm going to grab this pawn. You've got to be brave. And now let's try and create this play on the queen side here. If he moves his knight, I undermine the c5 square so I can take on c5. So, yeah, good move. I feel that one. Good, good move. He's going very nice move, actually. Very, very good move, that one. So he's going to try to take and kill me. Uh, yeah, that is a very good move. Scary move to deal with. Okay, I'm going to try to keep it closed over here. If I'd have taken his knight, he would have taken on f7 and he has knight e6 check. So I'm worried about a queen getting to g6, but my knight on b4 defends c2 and d3. So he can't easily get his queen into the position here, thankfully. Okay, well I need to take this I need to take this knight off and win another pawn. And now I would love to get my own attack going here, so let's try. Let's try to first of all get knight f2 as a threat in. So knight f2 is my main threat. So he's covered that and he's attacked my knight. Should have seen that one coming. All right, I'll put it... Ah, oh, he's got rook takes f6. Silly of me. Just silly, wasn't it? Silly to uh, allow this one to occur. Like knight, knight d3 was a bit of an artificial move there. Because, look, my knight's just travelled around and he's won a pawn and, and improved the placement of his pieces in the process. So that was really bad. I, I think I'm going to have to at some point castle queenside this has to and try to get my king in the corner now he's got bishop here right let's go here first to stop something coming to e3 i don't like a piece coming to e3 i didn't want to play this before because he had knight e4 when the knight was on d2 but it's no longer possible so now he's coming in here i'm castling i'm not i'm not thinking about any other option i've got a castle Queen g6 was the threat. And 
I feel like an exchange of queens will greatly help me. For a change, I'm the one begging for the queens to come off. It's not often you'll see me begging for the queens to be exchanged, but it's times like this, and his queen's coming in here now. He's a scary player, this Pontus. I'm one tempo away from being okay. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like defending, and I'm... Def oh, dear, I've given him this square. Oh, it's all falling apart. He didn't move to that square. That surprises me. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> what was that? That was just a... That was just a move to try. Oh no, he's got queen takes g. Ah, oh, dear, it gets worse. It gets worse, my position. I have to stop e7 check. He's just taking everything. Stop it, man. I've got one threat. Okay, we all like we all like to have these. Okay, come on. Now, where's oh, my my time? My time. Ah, oh, my position. My time. Everything. Ugh. Okay, that's that's that. And he's coming for the kill. And now he's going to make me. Well, I'm sure he'll see this, mate. Now. He didn't see it. What are you doing, Pontus? You're giving me a glimmer now. He's giving me a glimmer of hope for not finding these mates. What am I, I don't know what I'm doing, mind you. What am I doing? Anyone know what I'm doing? There we go. That's what I'm doing. Resigning. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thanks. Uh... I'll just say thanks. I'm just going to say thank you, too. Got to go. Thanks. Thanks, Pontus. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah, well, please like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Another video for you guys. Doing quite a lot of videos at the moment. So I'm now going to go and um, cook some Sunday roast or something. So, yeah, good stuff. Cheers. Anyway, goodbye for now. Bye.